Hello everybody, welcome to my 1999 XJ Jeep Cherokee walk around. Now, most of you guys that are Jeep XJ owners, you're out there looking for the best looking Jeeps and looking for the tricks of the trade and what to do on your XJs, how to make them perform better. And this video is an in-depth video for all of your questions. Um, I have built this from scratch and we are going to go through it. As you can see, this is our Black Ace Gear Edition XJ. For those of you that don't know who Black Ace Gear is or what Black Ace Gear is, it is an outdoor apparel company. So you guys need to get your butts over to www.blackacegear.com and check out some amazing apparel. Anyway, let's go ahead and get this started. Uh, this is a 1999 Jeep XJ. It is the four liter. It uh, is the inline six, which supposedly are supposed to be the bulletproof motors. That is if you can keep these beasts from not overheating, which if you can, that would be amazing because I don't know of one person that can keep these things from not overheating. Uh, I had that problem myself. But as you can see, I do have uh, 35, 12, 50, 15s. Yes, they are very small wheels. But with the bead locks on there, I had those custom painted in uh, apple red. Makes them look like a good solid 17 inch wheel. But uh, those are true bead locks. These are allied bead locks. And what a pain to put those on. I had to go through, there is 36 bolts on each one of these. I had to torque them down and go through each one of these three times. So you do the math, that is a lot. Uh, with four wheels but these are uh cooper discovery sst pro tires amazing tires they do an awesome job on snow in mud uh, rock crawling i am here in utah so for those of you watching this video you know boys in utah they like to have their big rigs and they like to they like to uh you know see who's got the best and the biggest and the baddest but uh you know these and you know i'm i'm a I'm an advocate of the BF Goodriches as well. Those are amazing, and that's probably what I'll end up putting on here next. Um, there you go. There's a Jeep Cher Cherokee Sport. Uh, in the front, I do have a six inch Rubicon lift. Um, you can see inside there, they're getting a little bit rusted. Again, being here in Utah, the, uh, the good old salt and the snow are not best friends with vehicles in the metal. But that is a six, actually six and a half inch Rubicon lift. Uh, you can see I do have the quick disconnects underneath here with the Rubicon sway bar. Uh, I do have a beefier steering on here. I went with a one inch steering, uh, one inch stabilizer. And I have, if you see the gray components that are under here, and we'll see them more, I do have uh, a long arm kit on here as well. So we can get a little bit more travel or a lot a bit travel. Um, here is a Schmitty built front bumper and my highlighted red D rings. I do have a worn power plant uh, winch. Now this is usually only used to pull out other Jeep Rubicons or Ford trucks for the most part. Um, once in a great while you'll see another Chevy, but you never pull out a Jeep XJ. All us XJ owners, we know this, right? Uh, XJs are amazing, but yeah, Toyotas, other Jeeps, Fords especially. You know, and, and occasionally one of your little Hyundai Sonatas, and those are your people that are completely lost and don't even know where they're at. I do have some major bright uh, LED front uh, lights. These things just on regular, when they are regular, they look like they're on brights. So these things are super bright. You can also see I have the smoked out blinkers on the front and on the side. And kind of rolling around on that, uh, you see my huge bushwhacker, uh, fender flares that I have on here you know that's to keep the mud and the rocks from flipping into the cars that are behind us um, and you know try to not get tickets because once you flare out too much on the sides over here cops like to see that and they like to give you tickets because well they got beat up in high school a lot and they don't have anything better to do than to pull somebody over that has tires that extend past the fenders too much so you know they have to have that a little authority 
So moving on, uh, you see beadlocks all the way around. We'll give you a kind of a side view of the of the driver's side. Uh, on the top, I have a matching wheel and tire. I have the rack that's up there, and you can see my high lift. I typically have a red shovel and a red ax that is on this, but um, I had to use those while I was camping last week. So they are not on there, but we'll go up underneath here. There's our Cherokee Sport on that side. But as you can see, there is my, there is my long arm kit right there. And you can see as it connects up to the top of the top of the assembly over there and my Rubicon shocks up and down. I love those shocks. This suspension travels so nicely. It is super soft and you know, I haven't had any problems with this. The flex is amazing. Uh, here, this is a frame stiffener and for you XJ owners out there, frame stiffeners are very nice on these because as, as most of you know these are unibodies and so putting a frame stiffener on this is essential. The one thing that I am missing that you don't see on here is I do have sliders coming. I'm having some custom made that are going to form fit to this bad boy and make that look super nice. Um, my front axle underneath is a Dana 30. I do have lockers front and rear. I decided to go with Spartan lockers front and rear. Now the bad thing about Spartan lockers, if you don't like having the clicking noise, uh, this type of uh, locker, you're locked when you go into four wheel drive all the time. So front and rear, you are constantly locked. You don't have the choice to unlock or not lock. Um, and I do have those front and rear. Now when you're in two wheel drive, you don't have it in the front but then in the rear you will have you will have it locked in the rear but they do have quite a bit of good slip on them so you only hear the little click which isn't really a bad deal at all i haven't had any problems with them it is just when you're getting over some obstacles it is nice to be able to unlock your front and only have your rear locked or vice versa have just your front locked and your rear um, I may go to some air lockers in the future, but I really do like this setup and it is really nice. So this rear diff and axle back here is a Dana 44. Um, I am going to have that trust, but it, uh, right now I think this is more than what I need. It's uh, carrying these Beast 35s very easily with no problems. and. I can't, I can't be more happier with the way that this thing wheels. Oh, then again, here is uh, Black Ace Gear. Uh, maybe plug that again. Go to blackacegear.com and get you guys some amazing outdoor clothing. Uh, in the rear, I have, a, I have a Smitty Built bumper in the rear with my highlighted red D rings on the back as well. This bumper is super nice, super, super solid. Um, can't go wrong with these front and rear bumpers. Uh, I am not sponsored by anybody, so don't think that I'm putting plugs in because I get paid or I get free stuff. That is definitely not the case. Um, I just am an advocate of those bumpers and they just perform awesome. Um, and then, uh, yeah, as you can see, I have the tow hitch here, but in the back, you can, you can take a look at what we have back here. Now, one thing that I am missing that some of you guys might see, I do not have my fuel tank uh, skid plate. That is going to be put on as well. I may do a separate video of installing the fuel tank kit um, a little bit later. So anyway, this is just to kind of do a little walk around on my Jeep and kind of show you everything that I've gotten, what I've done. And I'll go a little bit more in depth on what I've done as well. Uh, in the back, um, fully equipped with a fire uh, extinguisher. Now this fire extinguisher has nothing to do with uh, having to put out your truck. It's basically to put out all the Fords that you're passing by or your, your Toyotas and sometimes your other Jeeps that are caught on fire because they've just been pushed too much. Or you just may have an amazing fire at uh, camp and it gets out of control. As we all know this year, uh, the fires are an all-time high so it's good to have one of these on board um, I did upgrade my my speaker system and my stereo system this is a Rockford Fosgate 12 inch woofer 
Um, we'll go up into the front, but I'll kind of show you a little bit behind here. I have a eight inch LCD screen, um, DVD, CD, uh, amazing player that's up front there that we'll, we'll go through when we get up in the front, but great system. I also put uh, Rockford Fosgate speakers up here on each side up here. They sound amazing as well as I have door speakers in the rear doors and the front doors. So um, with my winch in the back, there is my air compressor. I have the full capability of being able to inflate, deflate tires, uh, not have any worries about getting air. Um, that makes it really nice. And then uh, this this right here is to make sure that we have the, the right tow rope for, uh, for those Fords that we need to tow out. And then, you know, to, to air down and to get precise precision air down when you're rock crawling, this is a really nice kit. This is the ARB recovery kit. These are really nice to have. You just, you thread them down onto the tire. You decide which pressure you would like to go. Um, I typically, when I'm rock crawling, I typically go down to about 10 to eight pounds on my tires. Some of you guys that have never uh, wheeled before, you're going, what the heck? How the heck do you put eight pounds in those big old tires? But you'll find out that if you're getting into rock crawling or if you are four wheeling in snow, that when you air your tires way down, you actually get much more grip from your tires than you would if you were fully aired up. When you're fully aired up, the tires have no capability of being able to flex whatsoever and they act as fingers when they're aired down and grab the rock and grab the snow. It's amazing how much how much more you can do when you air down your tires. And that's all four, not just one. So make sure that you are airing every tire down equally. So um, I just have a hard hat in here and I have uh, I have a, uh, you know, vest here. That's just um, for show, nothing. I'm not a miner or anything like that. But then uh, here we have a shovel, really uh, just to have it in here, just to be careful. You never know when you're gonna need a little shovel. Again, I have one up on the top of my roof rack, but here's the ax that I had. I was uh, playing lumberjack and out there splitting some wood, but this usually goes up. This, this one right here actually goes up to the very top of this right here. And I mount it right there. It looks really sweet. It looks sweet when the shovel's up there as well. So anyway, that's kind of the back here. Um, kind of some of my other upgrades that I'm going to be doing in the future is I am going to do away with that regular shock and the leaf spring and I am going to be doing coilovers on the rear. So you will see coilover shocks in the back here so I can get much more travel. Um, also something I would mention is I did rhino line the entire the inside of the wheel well. Sorry about that burp there. Uh, anyway, so just I lined the entire inside with rhino lining and it, yeah, it is kind of coming off and stuff like that. But, uh, but it looks cool when it's fresh and uh, you know, I will end up doing it again. So very nice uh, little addition. So we'll move into the back seat here. Uh, just, uh, you know, the interior of this Jeep for a 1999 uh, to me is impeccable. It uh, looks really good. I've kept it super clean. I try to do my best to make sure that I keep all of my stuff clean. There you can see my speakers in the back back there. Um, this seat folds completely down, so you have a huge cargo space up in the back back there. So if you decide to have a, a party back here, you know, um, you can do that. So uh, nice little floor mats right here. And then we'll go to go to the driver's side, or the passenger side here. And as you can see, I've got some upgrades that are up inside here too. Um, here I have some really nice uh, Goodyear floor mats. These Goodyear floor mats are amazing for traction. So, you know, when you're coming inside and you need to get that great traction, boy, you can't beat these. You know, having Goodyear tire mats uh, are amazing because you never know when you're sitting down in the front seat when you're gonna slip and fall and, and need that traction. <laughs> Uh, I did I did put in this um, custom XJ uh, toggle switch cover. I'm not a smoker, so 
I don't need an ashtray, and I thought that this was awesome to have for uh, ashtray cover. And each one of these, you can turn these on, and it toggles lights. It also it also engages lockers as well. Um, here is my screen that I showed you. My my. Uh, custom stereo that I put in there. Now, if you're going to do something like this, you do have to have um, a bigger a bigger faceplate right here to put in, but those are easy to come by. Installing this was fairly simple as well. Um, everything in here, I mean, is, is working awesome. And, you know, like I say, it is, it is fairly clean. So uh, custom little uh, wheel cover right there, just with a little bit of red highlights as well. Um, and that's pretty much it on the inside here. There is a couple of things that I would like to show you. Oh, you might wonder how I get my doors so quiet when you're opening. These Jeep XJs tend to have a lot of noise when you open them, but if you notice, mine is really quiet when you open it. Here is the trick right there. I bought brand new brackets and pins. Now those pins right there that you see, this, this right here, these break off and they fray so this little oil i just put a little bit of uh wd-40 on there just to make sure that they stay safe and firm and and uh are quiet but these are priceless and that really is what helps keep your your door from closing quietly versus a really hard loud snap so i'm gonna open up the hood kind of go through some things with you guys under the hood that I feel like is very important. When I bought an XJ and I built this up, there was a lot of things that I wanted to I wanted to know and a lot of that was under the hood. And you can find videos left and right on specific things for under the hood, but as I mentioned before, this is this is the 4 liter 4.0 uh, inline 6 indestructible engine that Jeep had put in there. You see these in Snowcats as well. I mean, these are great engines. They have a lot of pep. Um, they've got power. And for the most part, there isn't a lot of problems. The problem that you are going to find, and I'm sure most of you guys are already aware, is this right here, is you are going to have issues with a radiator, you're gonna have issues with a fan shroud, you're gonna have issues with a secondary electric fan, and you're gonna have issues with your thermostat cover, your T-stat itself, and this T-stat sensor. And you also, when you're running bigger tires, you're gonna need a new one of these, and that is a power steering pump. I found that out. Running bigger tires, you need a heavier duty power steering pump because the original one is not powerful enough to continue rotating those larger tires. So you do need to upgrade your power steering pump to facilitate those large tires. Now what I did is I went in and I put a Mishimoto uh, radiator in here. This is a full aluminum radiator. I would highly recommend a full aluminum versus a steel radiator. They conduct heat a little bit better. They also transfer it much better. They're lighter and uh, you know as far as size is concerned you know you can get the same size but the aluminum uh, radiators are the best uh, in my book. Now there are a few high-end and low-end uh, radiators me personally, I don't like to go cheap when it comes to the heart of a system or the heat of the system. So I went with the one of the most expensive, which this Mishimoto all aluminum motor, or I'm sorry, radiator cost me a little over $400, but um, I feel like it's a really good investment. I also have the secondary, this right here is the secondary electrical fan. Some of you may have them and some of you may not, but this is this is very important for overheating issues and you must have one of these in here. You can see that they are easily installed. There is an electrical cable right here. It comes down into here and you just click it in. And then there is also some mounts that are just on the back side over here that you put this in. It hooks up real simple. And then you put a toggle switch in there and you are you are set to go. 
The other important thing that I found on this one when I bought this, it did not have this fan shroud right here. It didn't have it didn't have this at all. This is very important for you to have because it does deflect the air and pushes it into the motor. If you don't have this, the air will just sit and go down below the motor, up above the motor. It has no direction, so it won't properly cool the way that it is supposed to. So make sure you have this fan shroud on there. It's a real cheap product. You can buy one of those for like $22, $23. Um, when I got this, I also replaced all of the hoses. I thought that that was going to be important just to make sure that um, we had new hoses and nothing was was uh, backed up. Um, and then I bought a new sensor here. I also bought a brand new water pump. You can see down in here, this is, this is the new water pump. Um, and a serpentine belt which connects to that pulley and kind of drives this whole system right here. This is the serpentine belt. But... Uh, that's pretty much all the upgrades. I did put an additional um, uh, block underneath here to get a little bit more airflow, but pretty much that is about all I have to show you on the engine part. Um, again, I will be doing some other upgrades. I am going to do the coilover in the rear. Um, I am going to uh, put my sliders on and I will, let's see, probably do, uh, uh, probably do, a couple of other skid plates up underneath there but that in a whole is my walkthrough on my jeep xj 1999 i would love to hear from you guys if you guys like it if you don't like it that's great if uh, i'm just an annoying commentator through this video you know let me know but this is uh my walkthrough and i guess stay tuned for my next upgrade and my next video thank you guys